Okay, the purpose of today's webinar is to show you what's new in version 2.9, at least the highlights. Um, so first first thing on the on the docket here is uh, the ability to now mark a plan task complete in the game plan without having to schedule it first. So the fit, check face plate housing cover task is planned. It's not in work. It's not scheduled. I can right click on that and say mark it complete. So I can do that in um, one step now. The next thing, which is actually a really big thing, is uh, what we call shared tasks. So we now differentiate between shared tasks and meetings. Um, we have two separate types of tasks now to model those. So firstly, um, this uh, supplier qualification meeting for Bob and John that I have here, if I were to edit that, You'll see now in the create task at a task window, there's a new uh, button for meeting. So in this case, I am specifying it as a meeting type task where the resources will spend the same amount of time at the same time. So I've assigned it to Bob and John. Um, this is the old, be uh, old behavior. Each Bob and John get a copy of the supplier qualification task and their backlogs. If one of them were to schedule it, say Bob schedules his, it's um, scheduled for both because it's a meeting, same amount of time at the same time. If John were to resize his, you know, it's, it's going to resize Bob's and it's going to resize anyone else's. If Bob's, Bob were to mark his complete, it'll mark it complete for everyone. It's, it's just one shared activity. So uh, that's how you model a uh, meeting type task. Now you have to tell it that you're creating a meeting. You know, so you specify it as a actual meeting type task. Okay, um, the next one, which is the new one, is the, is the shared task. That's the one here that's got the three white dots instead of the black dots. So this is a shared activity. Uh, I'll show you how to create this. We'll come up here and just create a task. And it's an individual task. I'll just say that this is a shared activity or a shared task. <clears throat> so you're creating a shared task anytime you have work or monitor chosen, but not meeting, and you select multiple resources. So since I got Bob and John here at the top, I'll just use Bob and John. And let's say that for work, we'll say it's um, eight hours of work over two days. And I say, okay. And because it's a work type activity, you'll see that there's a shared activity task here. This is a uh, summary task. It's called the shared summary task. And then underneath it are, as you can see, you can expand and collapse the dots, are copies of the task which are independent of each other. So John gets his copy, Bob gets his copy. Pardon my, my graphics. Um, if John if um, John were to take his copy and, and edit it and make it somehow different, maybe he says, well, my portion of this work is really only two hours of work and I can do it in one day. He's now making his copy independent from the shared task. So the, the shared summary task still drives Bob's copy because Bob hasn't changed it whereas John has changed his. So in other words, if I were to edit the, the shared summary task and say, uh, well, let's actually plan for 12 hours over you know, th three days, because, <clears throat> because John's already changed his, his is not going to change, his is completely independent of the shared task, whereas Bob has not changed his, so it's being driven by changes that are made to the shared summary task. So Bob's copy now says to three days and 12 hours. Um, Bob could plan to work on it at some point in the future. John could say his is in work. He could say his portion's complete. Uh, but the shared task isn't completed yet. It won't be completed until Bob completes his portion of the work. Um, also notice that if you right-click on one of the subtasks, you can't create a um, successor. You can only create a successor to the to the shared task, which is the shared summary task. 
and it will only get flagged as being ready to work on once all the subtasks have been marked complete. Once the subtasks have been marked complete, the shared summary task will automatically be completed. It'll, that'll happen automatically, much like a summary task does now. One thing that's a little bit different though, if I were to back up and not mark this one complete quite yet, and unschedule it, um, this is unique to shared summary tasks. You can resize, you can resize the uh, duration of the summary task by by dragging it, by dragging its end. So you can do that. You could also edit the shared summary task and say that it's not driven by its subtasks, that its duration is uh, not a function of the subtasks. So you could model the shared summary task as one duration and the subtask as being shorter uh, durations. You could do that as well. So it's very flexible, lots of options. Um, and also flexible in the sense that each person can kind of customize their, their copy of the task to make it their own. Not only in work and duration, but also in terms of the title. You know, so Bob's shared activity, he could just rename it to whatever he wants to. Bob could even reassign his. He could say, no, I'm not going to do this. Jacob's going to do that. I could re reassign it to somebody else. So it's possible. You could go back to the shared summary task and you could assign more people. You can do this at any time. It could be already in work. Uh, and you could say, well, I need to add another copy for somebody else. And then that person could customize their portion of the work. So for something like a build, where different people are going to contribute to the task, to the effort, um, and they're going to, dip, to contribute at different times and different amounts, uh, this new share task is, is the way to go, the way to model that. If I were to come down here to my plan, I have this other... Other example right here, build and test first three prototypes. So as you can see, you know, John's got a copy. We'll say John did his copy yesterday, so he marks his uh, complete. Bob hasn't started his yet. Maybe he moves his to today. His isn't planning on being done for another you know, couple of days. Maybe it's um, scheduled. Maybe it's in work. So you can see criticality, et cetera, is going to be driven off of the criticality of the shared summary task and subtasks with extra slack are going to show up as maybe different levels of criticality as well. So, you know, Bob can completely customize his copy of this. Maybe he spends an hour on one day, so many hours on the next. But in the interest of the example, I'm going to go ahead and mark this complete so that you can see the right report, which is not queued yet. If I mark this task complete, all the subtasks are now complete, so the shared summary tasks gets marked complete and flags the next task. The right report is being queued and ready to be worked on. Let's see, what else? Um, yeah, so anything in version 2.8? that was um, a quote unquote shared task or a meeting will by default be a meeting in 2.9. So if you want any of those things to be um, sh uh, shared tasks, you'll need to edit them and you'll need to change it from a, a meeting to a shared task. So the way you would do that is whether you do it in the calendar or the backlog or in the game plan, doesn't make any difference where. But you edit the task, and it'll come in default as a meeting. So you change it to either work or monitor, either way, and say OK. And at that point, it's been converted into a shared task. So in this case, John has a copy. Bob has his copy. They could be on different days, et cetera. OK, so that's something to take note of. Also new in 2.9 is um, making um, a little more flexible uh, types of links, dependencies between, between tasks. 
historically tasks in playbook have been uh, finished to start and very rigid in that you know, definition so um, you know what's different now is like I, I, I still can't schedule the successor I can't schedule task B until at least task A is scheduled because that's the basic logic so let's schedule task A and now um, that task A has been scheduled I could take task B and I could schedule it as well so let me uh, pull this up make it Jacob showing so here's Jacob and here's his task B you could say I started working on that today you know so this isn't really a, any different you can have two scheduled tasks like so that was uh, normal in the past but now you have more flexibility with uh, how much they can overlap they used to be able to only overlap on one day in other words the end date of the predecessor and the start date of the successor could be on the same day as long as they were both um, scheduled that was possible in 2.8 what's new now is in 2.9 basically you can start to um, change when these tasks begin let me get back a day or there we go so Jacob could say actually he started this activity on you know on here and these two tasks can run in, in parallel um, and the arrows are going to be updated to begin uh, showing pointing down at the start date of the next task that's going to be an enhancement of the next build it's being worked on right now so it should be within a week or so uh, we'll have improved uh, display of the links or the arrows and um, adding segments etc so just allowing them to be more flexible yeah um, I, you can still mark the successor complete as long as the predecessor is in work or in, as uh, scheduled so you have further flexibility than you used to which makes it easier to you know model different situations etc if you have any questions don't hesitate to just drop us a line you can use the feedback buttons over here on the bottom left and uh, let us know if you have any questions or drop us an email at support at acure.com, A-C-C-U-E-R.com. Thanks.